Welcome to the July Globe Mission Mosquito webinar. Today I'm joined by Dr. Rusty Lowe. She's the science lead for the Mis Mosquito Habitat Mapper, Peter Nelson, the science lead for land cover, Liz Burke, Andrew Clark, and Dorian Janney, who are members of our team. The Global Learning and Observations to Benefit the Environment or GLOBE program invites citizen scientists from around the world to participate in the Mosquito Habitat Photo Challenge. This challenge combines Mosquito Habitat Mapper and Land Cover, two of the GLOBE Observer app tools, to document mosquito breeding habitats with photos. GLOBE would like you to take photos of mosquito habitats in either natural or artificial containers if mosquito larvae are present, you are encouraged to photograph them with a magnifier, which is optional. Then we'd like you to take photos of the land cover around the habitat location using the land cover tool. The photos submitted during this challenge will be used to create automated classification programs that can identify mosquito larvae and the environments they prefer. Such computer programs can help prevent outbreaks of mosquito-borne disease. Turning it over to Dr. Lowe. Greetings and thank you for being here. Um, it's a very exciting uh, and fast paced uh, webinar that we have planned for you today. We're going to be talking about this amazing data activity. It's this, this particular data challenge is different from any one that we have had before with Globe Observer because this one, we have five science teams that have requested data that we are hoping to provide and be partners with them in their. Um, world, you know, cutting edge science research. So first, safety first. Remember that when you are talking to people who might be wanting to participate in this challenge, we're looking at mosquito larvae and larvae, unlike their, um, the mosquito moms, they don't bite and they don't transmit diseases. So there's not a public health hazard associated with this event. However, where any of any time you're outside, there's gonna be mosquitoes nearby that might be biting. So we always say wear long pants, wear long sleeve shirts, um, insect repellent like DEET or Picardin is always a great idea. And um, be sure to practice source reduction, which is reducing the amount of standing water by dumping water out, by removing garbage, by covering or using a larvicide. Okay, great, thank you so much. Let's, let's go to the next slide. And this slide is why we are doing this. So uh, Globe Observer is um, a tool which is funded by NASA. People wonder why NASA is interested in mosquitoes because you can't see mosquitoes from space. That's what people always ask me. But what we can see from space and see very well and moderate over, and monitor over time are those factors that will it, it cause mosquito populations to increase. If they have the right conditions, warm in most environments, high humidity, a precipitation variability, these are the things that we need to monitor from our um, remotely, sensed, uh, remotely sensed from the space to understand what's happening on earth. And if we go to the next slide, this is what we're doing. As a citizen scientist, you are making that connection between mosquitoes on the ground and the data we get from space. And we're doing that by using the Globe Observer app. And what we are presenting today is the, um, the way in which we are really going to get the best information that we need for the research that we're doing. And that is to, when we use the Mosquito Habitat Mapper to also take coincident land cover measurements, because what that does is it takes those little mosquitoes that we can't see from space and puts it in a landscape, which we can document on the ground. And then we connect that to the satellite data. So you can see there's a really beautiful thread that we are creating by collecting these different data points. So let's go to the next slide. And I'm gonna show you here why we're having this challenge. And um, as I mentioned, there are five teams. One team is funded by the National Science Foundation and they are actually creating um, an AI system to recognize both uh, adult larvae and also um, um, 
uh, I'm sorry, adult mosquitoes and larvae. And they are also looking at the environments. And then in addition to that, and Peter is gonna talk just a little bit about more about this in a few minutes, they are going to be um, looking at the, um, the changes in land cover and looking at the, at the pictures that are being um, given to, uh, which are being uploaded by the app and that material is then gonna be used to develop um, uh, automated, um, automated systems or artificial intelligence to identify those environments. And, but to do this, we need thousands and thousands of photos of mosquitoes. We need thousands and thousands of photos of larvae because we wanna train, validate, and test the predictive models that are being created using machine learning or artificial intelligence. And so that is where all of us as globe observers come in. Next one, please. So what do you need to participate? Um, it's pretty easy. At the minimum requirement, you just need your smartphone. You need your smartphone with the globe observer app uploaded. And you need to have access to the globe observer tools, which are Mosquito Habitat Mapper and Land Cover. If you are interested in um, taking a sample and counting your mosquitoes. Uh, you're gonna to need to sample the water. You can do that using a cup, um, a cup measure, or you can use a uh, something we call macro pipette, but you may know as a turkey baster if you're from the US. That's the preferred method that a lot of uh, entomologists use to collect uh, mosquitoes in the wild. You get a plastic bag to store it. And then once you have counted your larvae, you can take one or two samples, put them on a paper plate or a white or a white china plate, and then look at it using a magnifier. We have these five uh, little, small clip-on microscopes that you are able to find in, um, you know, in a web-based store uh, for under $10. I've seen them as low as $3. I think right now the going price is about $6. Uh, if you can't access that and you have a magnifier on hand, you can also do some of the, op, some of the um, uh, measurements, or I'm sorry, observations using like looking through the magnifier. And you can even take a photo with your phone through the magnifier. So, and then also we want all those protect, personal protective items that you might need. Okay, next one, please. So now we're going to talk exactly about how we're going to go through and do this. So I'm hoping most of you um, have already downloaded the app. If you haven't, it's available in your, your app store. Um, it's known as Globe Observer or sometimes NASA Globe Observer. Um, but this, once you download it, you'll see this, this um, image on the right, which is the landing page. You'll open up the Mosquito Habitat Mapper. And then you will see different kinds of habitats. And what's important is you're gonna be identifying the habitat where there is standing water. And by pairing that with environmental data, we're gonna be able to provide rich data that can be used in forecasting models of vector-borne disease developed by scientists. Next one, please. Okay, so if you haven't done this before, and I think many of you have, so this might be a little bit of a review, but um, you're gonna, it's gonna take you through several data collection steps. For those of you who have used Mosquito Habitat Mapper before, uh, we have a new version that's probably gonna come out next week uh, that you'll be able to upload. And what you will see that you haven't seen before, on the left-hand side, there is a little bar there. And that bar lets you know the accuracy of the latitude and longitudinal uh, position that is provided by your, uh, by your device. And what we suggest, it'll usually start out by saying your estimated accuracy is greater than, is, is, is less than 65 meters, and that's not really enough. So what you do is press that, re that little button with the little circle on, the, um, on that bar on the below, press that two or three times, uh, you will quickly get um, a much uh, tighter and better resolution of your geo, geo position. We are looking for you to try and get something between six and 10 or 12 meters, if at all possible. That is about what is doable with most cell phones with the kind of uh, satellite access and or web services that you can get. 
So the next thing is once you have identified um, your lat longs, your, your place, your time, the next screen you will identify the habitat. And uh, notice that we're, because we are looking at landscape, there are many natural habitats. And uh, mosquitoes like still water. So places like a lake, a pond, a swamp, or a puddle. Um, if you have, uh, right in front of my house, I have a creek, but we have plenty of mosquitoes. That water is flowing, but all over the place, there are little places where the water has impounded and you have a little bit of stagnant water. And that's where those mosquitoes like to uh, raise their young. But also we're finding mosquitoes in artificial containers, anything from flower pots to, to tires. There are some mosquitoes that like to find themselves in tree holes. I saw some of those in Hawaii. And if you are um, working with students and you have set up some um, lawful traps, uh, you can also collect that data and say that it's trap data. And that's also very useful if you're doing any kinds of investigations. Um, so then we just collect a few data about how many you have. Uh, you just say how many larvae you have and how many pupa you have. And if you don't know what those look like, you can click on that button there and it's gonna show you what they look like. Pupa uh, look very different from the larva because they're, they actually uh, lose their, the, the, the siphon on the tail. They're, they are undergoing metamorphosis. So imagine your monarch butterfly in a chrysalis. It's just kind of changing before your eyes. You can't even identify them to genus or species at that time because they're rapidly modifying. And within 24 hours, they go from pupa to adult. So it's really ra ra rather rapid, but they are, you can see them because they have two trumpets on their head. That's how they breathe. And they have a great big area where the head is and the, and the thorax is. Okay, so count those if you can, say whether or not you see eggs, See what, say whether or not you have adult mosquitoes, any comments you wanna make, go ahead and put that in the box. We love to get that metadata from you. And then if you are interested and you want to go further, we ask you to photograph the larvae. And um, you've already photographed the habitat. We now want you to photograph the larvae. And these steps are built into the app. You don't have to think about it. It will just give you a prompt, but it's these photographs of the habitat, of the larvae, and of the land cover, which are gonna be used in this scientific project, which is why we're calling this a photo challenge. And so then if you're interested, you can go through the key, you can identify your specimen, uh, you can make any comments. And then the last step, which is the step that makes us all better citizens of the world, is you are asked to, if possible, to remediate that site by getting rid of the standing water. And you can do that by removing removing the water, if it's like in a piece of trash or a, a tarp or someplace that's collecting water you don't need, you can cover the water. If it's water using for irrigation, you wanna keep it or put a screen over the water. Um, uh, the other opportunity that you have is if you wanna use a larvicide, you can do that. But have you eliminated the breeding site? And you can say yes or no. If it's a lake, of course, you're not gonna eliminate the breeding site, but we ask you to see whether or not, if it's possible, if you can do that. So that is, um, that's really the app. And I urge you to go and take a look at this and try this out before the challenge starts. Next one, please. We just wanted to show you how incredibly sneaky these mosquitoes are. And we, when we say sneaky, we mean that they have crypt, what we call cryptic habitats. They, they breed in places you would never imagine. So I was amazed when I first started this that the, one of the preferred places are discarded tires. You know, they're warm, they're dark, they hold water, uh, they don't evaporate rapidly. So this is a place that is preferentially used by mother mosquitoes to raise their young. But you can also find them in sewage drainage, you can find them in trash cans, trash like cups and bottles that are on the ground, plant pots, water that you're collecting for storage, like, you know, a, a stock tank, for instance, or um, a water tank just regular standing water on the ground. We've even found mosquito in tire tracks and in footprints of animals and people. So they are very, very sneaky. I know that someone I saw in Brazil told me they found a larvae bre um, breeding taking place in a bottle cap. So depending on how desperate those mom mosquitoes are to lay their eggs, you, you'll be surprised the places that they find. So you've got to keep your eyes open. It's a detective task. Okay, the next one, please. 
And so now what I want to do is I want to turn this um, this talk over to my uh, my my collaborating scientists here, Peter Nelson. Peter Nelson is the science lead for land cover. Um, and um, because this is looking at land cover and mosquito habitats together, because this, all mosquito habitats are are close up high resolution bits of land cover, right? So now you see the connection. Um, thank you, Peter, go ahead. Thanks, Rusty, I appreciate that. And and uh, hopefully everybody here, again, you know, um, by documenting that mosquito habitat um, up close, you saw some of the pictures that were coming in. Um, and what we're missing, or what we sort of uh, um, don't see in some of those pictures is that context. We saw a lot of up close pictures of um, uh, bottles or of um, particular uh, building, um, sides of buildings, um, maybe some close ups of um, some vegetation, um, a lot of water up close. Um, and, and a lot of that, again, is, is happening in this larger context. And so, you know, part of what we want, want to do is, is when, you're, when you take those, those mosquito habitat photos, right, you can do them in any direction, at any angle, in any way that, that, that you want to sort of capture um, uh, where you're finding that, that mosquito larvae um, and that mosquito habitat. Um, and so, you know, that creates problems if we try to um, put that into context with, uh, with the satellite data, which is collected in a very systematic way. So this is where using, um, going to the next protocol, once you've identified some mosquito habitat or some potential mosquito habitat, you can then quickly and easily move and take a, a, and use the next protocol, land cover. And this has you take photos in, in, um, in particular directions so that it's a little bit more systematic so that when we compare the satellite image like what's behind me um, to what we see in, on the ground, we know that that photo is pointed in the north direction, the east direction, a south direction, a west direction kind of following a protocol, um, which makes it easier for um, other people to participate in the monitoring. Uh, and, um, and it also makes it easier to compare a place over time um, if, we, if we follow this protocol. So, uh, so this is our, our, our one of our first activities of inviting other people into a method that um, uh, uh, Dr. Lowe and I have been working on um, individually with groups of students or with groups of citizen scientists. Um, and it, it, you know, it's a two-step process, so it may not be intuitive to people. Um, but hopefully, when you find that mosquito habitat, you can quickly um, document that and then move in and, and use the Globe Observer land cover uh, tool so that you're getting these two different data sets together. Okay, so it, it, so hopefully um, it, it, if, if you haven't done this, you do need to do a little bit of training. And so if we go to the next slide, um, I'll show you, you know, um, there are three badges that you can earn that open up different parts of the protocol. The first one, Land Cover Observer, is, is, is how to take photos. And so there is a tutorial that actually walks you through um, how to take the photos um, in a systematic fashion um, and, uh, and how to uh, focus on um, an area that is not that immediate mosquito habitat that you might be focused on, um, that, that mud puddle, but kind of um, stepping back and, um, and taking a picture of that wider landscape. Okay, so there's training in the app that walks you through how to do a land cover observation. So take a, take a moment when you get a chance and go through that. It's only about a five or 10 minute uh, uh, training, but that shows you how to uh, then, you know, do this next step of recording the date and time of, of when you're making your observation, that location. And, um, and you'll, you'll see that, that one of the improvements um, that, that happened is, uh, is, is now we have the accuracy of that mosquito habitat location and the, the accuracy, uh, the spatial location of where you're doing this next observation. Again, to get taken together, we can even average those together and have a better understanding of our location which is really important when we try to find the, um, the satellite pixel um, or the satellite image that goes along with that ground observation. So, um, it, you know, that, that, that it's, it's a really important piece. And usually if you do one um, protocol, if you do the, the mosquito habitat, it'll know where you are, 
Um, and so this next one goes a little bit faster um, as, as you locate yourself. Um, and, and again, you know, we want to know what are those surface conditions that you're actually seeing. Um, and this can be a part of the landscape that changes pretty quickly, right? Like after a rain, you might have a puddle that shows up that has some standing water. That might be the mosquito habitat that you're actually documenting. Um, and this is, a, a, you know, an important piece that that um, you can quickly give us some context about what you're what you're what you're finding um, in terms of those surface conditions. Water is usually what we're talking about here. But we also are, are interested in that vegetation. This is something I learned from Dr. Lowe in one of our recent presentations together, is that mosquitoes really actually feed off of vegetation. Um, and so documenting where vegetation is, is an indicator of potential mosquito habitat. And that was a connection I always thought about water. I'd never really thought about this leaves on the trees or that vegetation piece of things. So uh, that again leads us to taking pictures of, of the different directions so that we can uh, start to see how, how um, uh, what that landscape is made up of, those individual land cover elements. And if we go to the next slide, when you take these pictures, you take a picture up so that we can see the sky. Basically, you can kind of think about that as taking a picture of the satellite. Um, you can take a picture down, and this again is, is um, maybe the mosquito habitat that you're documenting. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, and then we want you to take a, a, a photos in the northeast southwest direction. Again, you know, we have the protocol, it's using your, your compass in your mobile device um, to guide you through this process. One of the things that I think is really interesting about this is how you as a human can understand these pictures really easily. I see this in this downward photo, even without a date, I can recognize that it is snowy out. And that might be something that tells me, well, we're probably not going to find mosquitoes at that time. Maybe, maybe not, right? Like there's there's sort of this, this, this piece of, of, of uh, our temporal observation that is uh, in these photos right here. Right. The other thing, when I start looking at the photos um, in the in each of the different directions, I as a human don't see any leaves on those trees. Right. Um, and uh, and and I see you know those vertical branches that um, look like trees to me. And so I as a human have this model of the landscape of these different land cover elements that we're already doing. You know, when you're labeling that mosquito habitat, you are doing a classification. Um, and so you as a human are really good at this. And this is what we need to teach a computer to do. This is where, uh, you know, why we don't have this already implemented in our app, why we can't just tell you, here's the mosquito habitat and here's all of the different uh, uh, parts of it. And here's how much water is in there. Um, it's because it takes a lot of data to create this. Um, and so it's taken us a couple years to get at least enough uh, information and data that we can start testing out a computer's ability to identify a picture and relate it to potential mosquito habitat, right? So that's where, you know, these, these pictures are really, really useful and we just need lots of them. And, it, you know, this becomes really important because when we go to the next slide, slide 17, usually the, the, uh, the oh, I'm sorry, let's go to slide 16, where we finish up our observation first, right? Um, uh, and so after we've, we've, we've taken pictures, you can label what you find inside of those pictures. You can do that classification just like what I was doing. Um, this is that second badge inside of there. This is optional. You, you may want to do this. You may not want to do this. It takes a little bit of time. And quite honestly, if there's mosquitoes out, this might take a little bit more time than what you want to spend there and get bit. I know I've been run out of places as I've tried to do this because the mosquitoes come. You know, if you are in a mosquito habitat, that's that's one of these uh, 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 parts about think about your sa about that safety, right? Um, so um, w the photo piece is really what we need, and you can do that rapidly. Um, these labels um, are are a, a nice additional piece to it. Um, but but that's not what we're doing in this photo challenge, right? Photo challenge, right? So um, once you and once you finish that taking those photos, 
you you save them, um, and once you're back on a Wi-Fi or on a strong cell signal, you can send them to Globe. And again, you know, here's where where Globe. What we're trying to do is create a large database of observations. And that's really important because then we can we can start comparing it to some of the land cover maps that scientists are making on slide 17, for example. And um, and and here, you know, when people are looking for mosquito habitat, they look at where people are finding it. Um, are they finding it in forests? Are they finding it in water areas? Are they finding it in urban areas? And they can then go to a map like this, a land cover map, and say, find me all the areas that match this criteria of where I'm finding the mosquitoes. So, you know, there's a lot of maps like this, land cover maps that scientists are creating. And they tend to be the first, one of the first things that get brought into predicting where a mosquito habitat might be. But they're not always right. And, and they're not tuned necessarily to mosquito habitat. So this is, this is, again, one of these opportunities that if we can get enough data um, where we have mosquito habitat or where we're not finding mosquito habitat, combine that together with the land cover data, we can then maybe tweak or, or improve these maps for predicting mosquito habitat and not just general land cover, but focus it more in the research that we need to do here. So, that is a little bit about the land cover context of what we're trying to do. And this map that I'm showing you here, you know, if we zoom in, it is only labeling a 100 meter by 100 meter area. So it is not getting down to that mud puddle or to some of those containers that, that Dr. Lowe was highlighting earlier. And so even with this, type, with this global map, we still um, need to improve it for the resolution of the science problem we're trying to address here. So thanks for letting, listening to me talk about land cover. It's one of my favorite subjects and, um, and, the, and, and looking at these photos provides so much context to some of the satellite data or the land cover maps like this. So I hope you join us in our challenge, putting these two uh, data sets together. And, um, and Cassie, tell us a little bit more about how people can get involved in this. Well, thank you, Peter. Um, we have quite a bit of information on how to get involved with that coming up. Um, what I'd like to present next is a way that we can, as participants, keep track of how our data challenge is progressing. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Andrew Clark from our team. Hi, everyone. Um, Cassie, can I share my screen? Absolutely. So uh, I put together a quick dashboard um, to be able to see where observations are uh, and where they're coming in during the challenge. Um, can everyone see my screen right now? Okay. Um, so uh, the URL um, right now is, is not permanent. There will be a um, permanent URL that uh, will be shared a, as part of this challenge. Um, but if uh, you're interested to see how um, mosquito observations and land cover observations are coming along in your area, this um, is one way to do that uh, pretty quickly. So uh, when you go to the URL, which again will be a different one, uh, gives you a brief introduction and you can click in and um, you've got a few different parts. Obviously you have a, a view of the map and where observations are currently. Um, but the way it's set up is depending on where you're looking in the map, you'll get uh, updated counts. So say if you were interested in, you know, an area, if you zoom in, you'll see, okay, here, and all of this data is with, um, has been collected since the start of 2021. Um, so, you know, if you zoom into a tighter area, you'll see there are six mosquito observations and then counts of how many photographs have been submitted. And uh, what we're hoping to see as part of this challenge is that uh, in these series charts along the bottom, um, there will be a nice uptick um, as everyone is participating and really taking the time to take those larval photographs. Um, and uh, of course, there's also the land cover observations, which are going to be part of the challenge as well when you finish your observation and you 
you take uh, photos of the land cover around you. Um, so if you had an area in particular that you were um, really uh, interested in, maybe near your home or you, uh, your school. Um, so for example, with this, we found um, huge concentration of observations here, but only a few photographs of the larvae themselves. So seeing that number increase um, as well is going to be a uh, really important um, part of uh, contributing to the AI um, development of the uh, computer vision algorithms. Uh, so when it gets, um, you know, when the challenge uh, is kicked off, you can also look at um, different time ranges. So on this, there's a little flyout tab here. You can click on it and you can set um, the date range that you're interested in. So it defaults to being the start of 2021 to the day that you're looking at the, um, at the dashboard. But if you just wanted to say, look at the start of January, you know, you're not gonna see um, as many uh, mosquito observations. And when you make that change, you can either leave this side panel open or you can close it. Um, if you wanna keep it open all the time, you can pin it and you can go from there. So now, right now we're looking at a date range from January 1st to January 22nd. Um, so just a way uh, for you to maybe tune in to the area right around you um, and see how observations are coming in. And um, you can even, um, if you're interested, you can click on a single entry and, and get a little more detailed information um, about when it came in. And uh, if there are photo um, photos associated with it, you can see that information too. Um, uh, same also for land cover. Uh, you'll get um, you know, basic, it's not the complete data set, but it's uh, kind of the important um, points for just getting a handle on, on what's happening around you and you know what the photos are like. So you can click right into them. And uh, I hope that's useful um, to everyone. And like I said, there'll be a, a more permanent URL uh, coming shortly. Andrew, did you mention the layers on the side there? The oh, you can yeah. turn on? Yeah. Um, so uh, as part of this map, um, you have the options uh, to change what you're seeing. Um, if you wanted to hide, obviously the, the eye has got the line through it. And if you wanted to see one or the other, you can turn them on or off. Um, and uh, you can also up here in these little icons, uh, get a legend. So right now, because the other layer is off, you don't see the legend, but the, um, the legend uh, is right there through this little kind of a list icon. Um, and the uh, observation points are styled such that the color is related to how many photographs were submitted. Um, along with the observation. Um, was there anything else I missed, Cassie? No, that's amazing. Thank you, Andrew. Yep. All right. So, how can we how can you participate? You can stop over at the observer.globe.gov mosquito dash challenge webpage and you can find out about literally everything. Um, how to download the app, how to how to use the tools. Everything is right here on our challenge page. And our challenge officially starts July 25th and it runs through August 25th. We have what we call a challenge activity tracker and coming soon in Spanish. But besides taking and submitting observations, you can participate in a variety of ways. You can create, you can learn, observe, and you can be engaged during the challenge with lots of different activities. For example, in the create category, we have some examples. You can explore land cover with stacked blocks. You can create a mosquito habitat map. If you'd like to build your own larva trap, you can do that. 
with directions and everything. And if you'd like to also create a poster, something that you can share around with your family or in a library or in a community center. You can learn about mosquitoes through activities like the Zika zine, which is a, available in 10 different languages. We have a video from the author, um, Dr. Lisa Gardner, but you can kind of go through using the app in, a, in an engaging cartoon way. We have lots of videos that will show you how to classify um, your mosquito larvae, um, how to take water samples, how to best do any of your activities. And speaking of activities, I'd like to introduce um, Liz Burke, who can talk about the Mission Mosquito Science Notebook. Right, well, hello everyone. So obviously as we've gone through this, making those observations and taking those photos and sending that data in is essential to this challenge. I mean, that's, that's, that's where we're going. That's what we need you to do. But we need, photos of mosquito larvae and identifying and photographing a larvae is not necessarily something that everyone has a lot of experience with and has a big strong background in. So we decided as a team to create a resource that you can go to that will walk you right along um, to identifying larva. And so we created this notebook. It's called the Mission Mosquito Science Notebook. It is online. There are lots of new um, additions coming to this soon, but there's enough there to get you started. Um, so to get you started on this big adventure, um, we are gonna introduce to you in this notebook, the whole idea of identifying a larva. That's kind of our goal, to get you comfortable and confident in being able to do that. So we start with the assumption that you just probably, as most people, don't have a strong background in that. So we're gonna start off by introducing you to the larvae by little steps. We're gonna take the little parts and, and show you those and explain those to you. And then we're gonna go to how those parts all work together. And we're gonna have you draw it. We're gonna have you analyze drawings. We're gonna have you answer questions about it so that so that you become comfortable with this whole idea. And eventually after several steps, we are taking you through and some of them are here on this slide, we will set up some practice sessions for you in which we have set up some bug shots of these um, different types of larvae. This is just one example of one of the activities in the notebook, this bug shot. And you've got to go through and you will be able to do this by the time you get to this page but you will be able to look at those larvae because that's the starting point. I've got all these wiggling things here. How do I know which is even a mosquito? We'll get you there and we'll have you practice by looking at those and teach you what you need to look for. And, um, and so you, you practice on that and then on the sheet on the right, going through habitats, you know, is this a, a viable habitat? Is this a likely habitat? so that you feel comfortable with making that decision and moving forward. So um, we want you to recognize a mosquito larvae when you see it. We're gonna, um, again, present you with all the opportunities to build your confidence in doing that. Our newest entry, which I think is on the next slide here, um, we went in a little bit different direction. Some of you have already been introduced to this. Um, but we went with the mosquito larva hunters theme, um, which is a fairly popular theme these days in television shows, et cetera. But um, we're gonna take you on a hunt for mosquito larvae. And we are going to start off easily again, find the habitat, here's what you're looking for, take some samples, here's what you're looking for. Eventually then getting you to the point in mosquito larva hunters training two, in which we're gonna lay it out step-by-step step for you. We're gonna give you an image from the app. We just took it right off the app and slapped it right onto this piece of paper where you're gonna get a heads up. You're gonna know that's what I'm gonna see when I open the app. Next to that, we've included an actual photograph of a larva. 
so that you can say, well, oh yeah, they're similar. I kind of get where I'm going with this and can start to feel comfortable in making those comparisons. And, and so there are many steps involved. We'll take you to the next um, frame on that app with the same idea. Here's what the image is that you're gonna choose from on the app. Here's an actual larva. Can you see where you're going with this? We have you fill out a worksheet. So you've got everything written down and you're kind of keeping track. Yes, it had this. Oh no, it didn't have this part. And, and get you right through to um, identifying a mosquito larva. The, I, I guess I would like to point out because I, having worked with this aspect of this project for a while, the fact that we need these photographs, I just can't emphasize enough how important it is and how cool it is, I guess. That's the way I think of it. We are asking for these photographs, not only of the um, larva, but of the land cover as well. But they're going to a bigger purpose than just taking a photograph. Because the ones with the mosquito, for which I'm going to speak for just a second here, are going into developing some artificial intelligence that is going to be able to identify a mosquito larvae from a photograph accurately identify that larvae. And to do that's going to require so many photographs, if you know anything about AI, that it has to be a compilation of thousands, examination of thousands of photographs to get that computer to be able to identify that larvae. But, but even more important than that, like you're helping to develop that, how cool is that? But the, the intent of those AI um, opportunities is to be able to let the population in the world know where disease carrying or transmitting um, mosquitoes are hanging out, where they're found, where they're prevalent at any particular time of the year where the conditions are such that you better keep your eyes open when your mosquito season starts and some of those mosquitoes can be vectors. We wanna be able, if you know much about mosquitoes and you've been with us through the last few years, that's a big deal because they transmit some rather horrible diseases. And to be able to inform the public and make everybody aware of the prevalence or the um, occurrence of those diseases. That's such a cool part of, of what we're doing and bringing in the land cover so that you can use that in, in analyzing where to look for those mosquitoes and where they're gonna be found and how changes in the environment are changing their habitats. And it's exciting stuff. We really hope you join us. We're giving you lots of tools that we think will make you comfortable in doing that. So, um, so have a look. It, it, it's it's going to take some time. Please devote some time because your time is valuable to us, and we would really appreciate your um, input on this. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. That was wonderful. And I just wanted to point out um, a comment that Henry Saunders made in the. Um, in the chat here, Henry is a longstanding globe uh, globe um, uh, country coordinator. I just wanted to, see, and he pointed out, what about COVID? So this is really important. If you are in an area where COVID transmission is actively taking place, which is many parts of the world right now, including many parts of the U.S., um, you have to decide for yourself whether or not you feel comfortable going outside and making observations. Last year, before we really understood how COVID was transmitted, we actually did not ask people to make any observations because we were unsure of the vector of trans, the, 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 direct, the way that these, um, the disease was transmitted. Now we do know that it's airborne. And um, so in general, uh, the feeling is that if you are outside and away from people as you might be if you are making a land cover or a mosquito observation, you should be really quite safe. But we do not want anybody to go outside if they don't feel comfortable to do so. And um, if, if that's the case, this may not be uh, a challenge where you may actually want to go outside and, and take these photographs. However, you can participate in all the other ways using this activity tractor as well. Um, but um, 
so I just really wanted to thank uh, Henry to, for mentioning that because I think we would have forgotten that in this presentation. So uh, great. So uh, here are some photo tips, and um, these uh, tips are uh, are are um, given to us by the head, the lead scientist for the NSF project. And what they are doing is they are trying to identify mosquito larvae, which we don't have yet, good AI for this. And so the app asks you to take a full body photo. So that's not a surprise. Um, the app also asks you if you wanna to continue to take photos to take a picture up close of the tail end, which you would do with your microscope, um, clip on microscope if you have one or your magnifying glass or and even a real a regular microscope would be suitable. Um, what's important, to realize is we don't want just the body, but also take several photos so that you get um, pictures of the hairs as well as the other features because the position of those hairs and how many of those hairs that you have um, are very diagnostic for different species. So that is really important. <clears throat> and so he also asks that we uh, try and take also a couple close-up pictures of the head and the thorax, because even though our key does not use this, because we are looking at the three medically important genus, uh, uh, um, genera of mosquitoes, um, other species are identified using the head and the thorax as well. So we ask you to take you know, a full body, a tail end. In the app, you're allowed to upload up to nine photographs. So if you really, really are interested in AI and really want to help, we'd love to get those nine photographs of even just one mosquito. Multiple photographs really helps from different angles, looking at different features, looking at the hairs, getting fair, hairs in focus, and um, you know uh, maybe the siphon a little bit out of focus, and then went the siphon in focus, and then the hairs a little bit out of focus. You know what I'm saying? So um, that is really, really important. So we really want those photos. And then once again, with the, um, the associated land cover photos, once you go through that quick little tutorial, which takes what, Peter, about five minutes to actually go through, it's not, it's not, very, not very intense. Um, but once you do that, then you are able to take, take your photographs. And really, you just have to take one up, down, north, south, east, west. It really takes about two minutes. And if you want to classify the data, and we encourage you to do that, that takes more time and a little bit more training, um, which you can also get in the app. But just getting those photographs is really important. And that's why we're calling this a photo challenge. So uh, thank you for that. Thank you, Rusty. To continue on with the activity tracker, ways that you can in, in, be engaged through, the, through this entire challenge would be on, for example, social media. You can follow the GLOW program on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And you can also use the hashtag mosquito challenge to keep track of perhaps where you found the most larvae for, the, for your period of observation. Um, we also have a, a vast resource library that if you'd like to see how to use a clip-on magnifier or how to sample water, um, how to upload observations if you have trouble. It's a troubleshooting guide. Um, and then how to identify mosquitoes. We have their short tutorials, short videos, so you can, you can look at those at your leisure. I'm kind of excited about this. For those of you who are, are, are on um, and you, you would like to participate, but perhaps you don't have the tools necessary, we have a request for free mosquito larvae kits. If you are a GLOBE partner or a GLOBE school or teacher, we have approximately 25 kits that we're making available if you can commit to taking and submitting observations during the challenge. We're only able to submit to US addresses and there's a, a Google form right here that you can fill in and send in by July 14th. The kit will include five clip-on scopes for your smartphone or tablet and a few other supplies to get you started, like a pipette, some plastic gloves, plastic baggies, and a paper plate. To wrap up, in summary, download the Globe Observer free mobile app, register for an account if you haven't already, get your email address, and then use it to log in. Look around where you are for water sources that are potential mosquito habitats, places where water is collected, could be a 
a bottle cap discarded in your yard. You might have wrappers and garbage that blow in from the neighbors. It could be, if you live in a, a high rise, it could be a kind of a depression on your balcony or in a flower pot, places where water can collect. But take those observations of the habitat, start with the mosquito habitat mapper, look for the larvae, take the pictures, and then of the habitat around it, that's the close up view. And then go to the land cover tool, which is the larger landscape portion, and take those six photographs too. If you need tutorials on how to do all of this, they're available on our challenge page. And I have the link down at the bottom, observer.globe.gov slash mosquito dash challenge. And then the best part will be to view your observations on the dashboard. If you'd like to encourage friends and family to see who can make the most observations on your block or in a region or an area, if you're a Girl Scout leader, Globe partner, challenge the people in your in your community to see what they can do for mosquito and land cover observations during this period. Thank you so much for attending and that's all I have. Great, so I just wanted to, um, to stress that this research is really international, that we need, we need information from all, over the, from all over the world. And so there are uh, species of mosquitoes, for instance, in India, um, namely um, Anopheles stephensi, that we need lots of pictures of because it's now a game changer for malaria in Africa. It's moved from its home in India to Ethiopia. And we have this also happening. One of um, our uh, participants here noted that in Germany, there are some um, new uh, vectors of disease that weren't there before, these invasives. And they, they, these two are some that are really bothering us here in the US. It's Aedes albopictus and Aedes aegypti. These are both, uh, Aedes albopictus comes from the Orient, from East, East Asia. Aedes aegypti comes from Africa. It, the, both of these are huge problems in North and South America and Central America, um, also now in, in Europe. Uh, Aedes Japanic, japanicus is now a big problem in Europe, especially in places like Germany. So around the world, we are really finding huge problems with vectors of disease. And as citizen scientists, um, it's a problem that is too big for any mosquito control agency, for any government to handle. And it is something that we really have to trickle down and as citizen scientists participate in promoting health for our communities. So this is my impassioned plea to not only um, uh, be part of this really cool and fun and exciting challenge to get data for scientists, but also to really work to help promote the health of your own community by being a mosquito habitat mapper and using the land cover app in association with it. So thank you so much for attending today. And if there are any questions, I think we can answer just a couple before we go. Um, Reverend Vivek uh, Kamkari has had his hand raised. He put a question in the chat. I wonder if he still has a question. And if not, if anybody else has a question, we'd love to hear it before we go, because we still have three minutes. Well, fantastic. Thank you so much for attending today. Thank you very much. And you can check. Check out the recording of this webinar on the Globe Mission Mosquito webpage.